So next, uh, we will be trying to solve a numerical. So let us find out what is given in the question. Uh, reduce level, which is called RL, of ground along the center line of a proposed road from chains 10 to 20 are given. The formation level at the 10 chains is 107 meters and the road is in a downward gradient of 1 is to 50 up to a change of 14 and then gradient changes to 1 in 100 downwards. Formation width of the road is 10 meters and the side slope of banking is 2 is to 1 and the length of changes is 30 meters. So reduced level that means RL we all know what is RL we have already uh, studied about uh, reduced levels or RLs in our serving part 1 subject. So the reduced level of uh, or the RLs of ground are given in this question from chain is 10. Now what is the length of the chain? The length of the chain is given as 30 meters. That means Total ch change from the uh, of the starting point is 10. That means 10 into 30, that is 300 meters. So we are starting a problem from the distance of 300 meters. Then 11, 12, 13, 14, it goes up to 20. Okay, and each and every point, each and every change point, the RL of the ground is given. Okay. The RL of the ground is given. And what is uh, what else is mentioned in the question? The road is in a downward gradient of 1 in 50 up to chain 14. That means from chain 10 to chain 14, it's in a downward gradient of 1 in 150. And then the gradient changes to 1 in 100 from chain is 14 that means from chain is 14 the downward gradient changes to 1 in 100 okay let us try to understand the question first suppose this is the uh, let us uh, try to draw the longitudinal section what is the beginning chain inch starting chain is it is 10 that means what is this distance this distance is one chain is equal to 30 meter that means 10 chain is equal to 300 meter. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. It goes like this. Okay. 19 and finally 20. Okay. So. Our existing ground level is something like this. Okay. And RL, we know the RL of this point. We know the RL of this point. We know the RL of this point. It is given in the question. We know the RL of this point. We know the RL of this point. Okay. All these are given in the question. Okay, up to chain is 20. I have shown here up to chain is 19, but uh, due to lack of space, but uh, in the question it is given up to chain is 20. Okay, so this is I am just uh, trying to give you a graphic representation of the problem. This is what this is ground level. This is actual ground level on which we have to construct the road. This is the actual ground level. And what else is given? What else is given? Is the formation level. Is the formation level. This is the formation level. This is the formation level. And this is what? This is ground level. So from ground, existing ground level, we have to achieve this level, formation level. This is the road level actually. So from actual ground level, we have to achieve this formation level by art filling. 
Sometimes we have to go for earth cutting also if the ground level is above this formation level. But here in this case we have to do earth filling. All this portion, all this blank portion have to be filled up by earth in order to achieve this formation level from this ground level. So all this blank portion has to be filled up with earth. So we need to calculate how, uh, what is the amount of earth filling that we need to have in order to achieve this formation level from this ground level. How much of earth filling has to be done to achieve this formation level from this existing ground level. Okay. Now the very beginning RL of the formation level is given. It is given as 107 as you can see. RL of ground uh, form at every change age, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, up to 20, the RL of ground is given. But the RL of formation at the very beginning is given. At change is 10, the RL of formation is 107. The rest we have to find out. How we can find out? We can find out from this downward gradient. So from change is 11 to 14, the downward gradient is 1 in 50. And the very beginning RL of formation is 107. So let us go back to the figure. The very beginning RL of formation line is 107. But what about this RL? What about this RL? What about this RL? What about this RL? RL at every station. We need to find out. We only know the RL of existing ground level. We don't know this RL. We know the... Uh, RL of this uh, existing ground level point but we don't know that the uh, RL of this corresponding formation level so at each and every station at each and every station we need to find out the RL of the formation level mm -hmm. so how we are going to find out from here changes 11 to 14 the downward gradient is what is this downward gradient it is 1 in 150 downward gradient means 1 in 150 what what does it mean that if we move 150 meter horizontally then we have to move 1 meter vertically downward because this is downward gradient downward slope the slope is downward it is not upward so the slope is 1 in 150 so if we move 150 horizontally we have to move 1 vertically downward this is the slope again we are if we are moving 150 horizontally we are moving one vertically. This is the slope. So in this way, we have to achieve this RL of the formation level at each and every station point. Okay. So what is this distance? If we move 150, we have to move one downwards. So what is this distance? We know the RL of this point from here to here. Now we need to find out the RL at this point. From here to here, what is the distance? 10 into 30 it is 300 so this has to be 330 everything will have to be multiplied by 30 because 30 is the same length everything you multiply by 30 so this is 300 this is 330 this is 360 30 30 we need to add on this is 390 this is 420 450 and just like that 480 okay so from here to here this is 30, from here to here this is 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30 and uh, the uh, distance between each and every station is 30. So how much we are moving horizontally? 30. So how much we need to move vertically? That we need to calculate. Okay. So if we according to the gradient, if we move 150 horizontally, then we move 1 vertically. If we move 150 horizontally, then we move 1 vertically downwards. If we move, move 1 horizontally, then 1 by 150 vertically. If we move 30 horizontally, then 1 by 150 into 30 vertically. That means 1 by 5, that means 0.2 vertically. So, if we are moving 30 horizontally, we have to move 0.2 vertically. That means, if this is 30, if this is 30, then this is, if we are moving 30 vertically, then we are moving 0.2, sorry, if we are moving 30 horizontally, then we are moving 0.2 vertically. Again, if we are moving 30 vertically, then we are moving 0.2 
but uh, 30 horizontally then we are moving point 2 vertically so the rl of this point will be 107 minus point 2 okay the whatever rl we reach so that means rl of this point 107 minus point 2 means 106.8 so whatever the rl of this point we have to deduct point 0.2 from this in order to achieve the RL of this point 106.6 just like that 106.4 because if we are moving 30 we are moving if we are moving 30 horizontally we are moving point 0.2 downwards again if we are moving 30 horizontally we are moving point 0.2 downwards that means this is 106.4 so point 0.2 we have to deduct because this is if this is 106.4 this is how much 106.2 if this is 106.2 this is how much this is 106 if this is 106 this is how much just like that we have to go on okay but we need to notice one more thing that the slope or gradient is different from this point it is 1 in 100 so up to this point it is okay, we have to deduct only point 2, 106.8, 107 minus point 2, 106.8, 106.8 .8 minus point 2, 106.6, 106.6 minus point 2, 106.4, 106.4 minus point 2, 106.2. From the earlier case, from the previous case, we need to deduct only point 2, only point 2 we need to deduct. In case of downward gradient, we need to deduct point 2 and if it is upward gradient, we have to add point 2, okay? So up to this point it is okay, from, but from this point, from this point the slope or gradient has changed. It is 1 in 100. Okay, so we will have to calculate once again. So if it is moving 100 verti horizontally, then it is moving 1 vertically. So if it is moving 1 horizontally, then it is moving 1 by 100 vertically. So again what is the distance? 30, 30, 30, 30. So if it is 30 moving horizontally, then 30 by 100 that means 0 0.33 0 0.3 it is moving vertically earlier case it was 0.2 now it is moving 0.3 vertically so from this point we have to deduct 0.3 now this is 0.3 this is 0.3 less than this point this is 0.3 less than this point this is 0.3 less this is 0.3 less than this point, this is 0.3 less than this point, this is 0.3 less than this point because from this point onwards the slope has changed. So if it is 106.2, then 106.2 minus 0.3, 105.9, 105.9 minus 0.3, 105.6, minus 0.3, 105.3. So this way we need to achieve this formation line or formation level okay so after understanding this we need to go for uh, solving the problem so for that purpose we have to prepare a chart like this one for calculation purpose so here um, in this column you can see depth of cutting is there height of bank RL of formation at the very beginning point RL of formation is given so at the change of 10 RL of formation is given in the question. RL of ground, we already know it is given in the question. Horizontal distance and chain edge. Chain edge 10 means 300, 11 means 11 into 30, 330, 12 into 30, 360, 13 into 30, 13 into 30, 390, 14 into 30, 420. So if we keep adding 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, we will get the horizontal distance up to 600 meter. So why we are adding 30? because the length of the chain is 30 okay so these things are given in the question now just like that we have found out the rl of the formation line at each and every point so we need to find out how much art filling will be there art filling will nothing but will be nothing but the difference between this point and this point we know this point we have found out this point then only the difference is difference in height is art filling okay so we will try to represent those data in a tabular form here so again, RL of the formation at the very beginning point, chain is 10 is 107. As we can see in the drawing, chain is 10 is 107. At each and every other point, we need to find out. So 
and each and every other point we need to find out so from again I am trying to explain the same thing that I have explained here again I will explain the same thing here also from this point to this point the gradient is 1 in 150 from here to here the gradient is 1 in 100 so let us start from this point if we are moving 150 horizontally we are moving one vertically if we are moving one horizontally we are moving one by 150 vertically if we are moving 30 horizontally this is 30 from this point to this point how much we are moving we are moving 30 so if we are moving 30 then 30 by 150 that is 1 by 5 1 by 5 that is point 2 vertically so from this we need to deduct point 2 why do we are deducting point 2 because it's a downward slope if it is an upward slope then we have to add point 2 okay so from here to here we will add point two. Uh, we will deduct point two, point two, point two from the previous readings just like I have explained in this figure okay so 107 minus point two, 107 minus point two, 106.8 106.8 minus point two, 106.6 106.6 minus point two, 106.4 106.4 minus 0.2, 106.2. Okay, but from this the case changes because from from this from this point the gradient has changed. So it is one in hundred. So if we are moving hundred horizontally, we are moving one vertically. If we are moving one horizontally, we are moving again. I am showing the same calculation for your convenience. One by one hundred vertically. So if we are moving again thirty horizontally. Then 30 by 100, 1 by 3, that means 0 0.3 particularly. So from now on, we have to deduct 0 0.3 from the previous point because it's a downward slope. And if it, is, if it is an upward slope, then we have to add 0 0.3. But we are not going to add 0 0.3 here because this is a downward slope, not, not upward slope. If it was an upward slope, then we have to add 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. Now this is a downward slope, so we have to deduct 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. Okay. So 106 minus 0 0.3, how much? 105.9, I think. 105.9 minus 0 0.3, 105.6 minus 0 0.3, minus 0 0.3, minus 0 0.3, 105 minus 0 0.3, 104.7 minus 0 0.3, minus 0 0.3. Minus 0 0.3 104.4 in this way we have found out the RL of the formation line that means this is the formation line and we have found out the RL of each and every station point and each and every change point okay so we have got this line so we need to find out the difference between the ground level and the formation line at each and every point this is the formation line, this is the ground level, we need to find out this gap, this distance, where we have to fill up the art. Okay? So, RL of formation minus RL of ground is equal to height of bank. 107 minus 105, that is 2. 106.8 minus 105.6 I think this is 1.2 isn't it so in this way we will find out all these values RL of formation minus RL of ground if it is positive then we have to fill that value here in this row height of bank if it is negative then we have to fill that value here so what basically means is that RL of formation minus RL of ground if it is positive then we got banking that means we have to fill art and if it is negative then there is cutting that means we have to cut the art or excavate the art okay So in this way we have filled up the values of this table. 
changes was given, distance was given, area of the ground was given, area of the formation we have found out by uh, with the help of these gradients, and now we have found out the height of bank for each and every station point. So from this table, we will try to calculate the amount of arch filling because there is only banking, there is no cutting, only bank is there, banking is there. And height of bank we have already got at each and every uh, chain is point. So we'll try to calculate the amount of art filling here with the help of this table. Okay. So after finding out this um, these values, we need to make another table. And then now let's go to that table. Now we will try to solve this problem by the very first method that is mid sectional area method. We have already learned about this method in our previous videos. Now, we will apply this method to calculate the total amount of artwork. So in order to do that, first of all, we will have to make this table. So what are the contents of this table? First of all, change, which is given in the question. Length, RL of the ground, RL of formation, depth, which is denoted by D. There is nothing but height of bank or depth of cutting we have already found out that found that out in our previous table here height of bank or depth of cutting whatever is there we will have to put these values under the column under this column depth which is denoted by d okay so we have found out these values in our previous uh, table and we have put them in this table okay area of ground is given in the question area of formation we have already calculated for each point for each station then depth that is height of the bank or depth of cutting whatever it may be we have found the found, we already calculated for each station and we have respectively put the values of each and every station in this table then next is mean depth after that it is BDM, SDM square, BDM plus SDM, the uh, then length between the section which is denoted by L, and ultimately the total quantity. And whether the quantity is in banking or cutting, that is, uh, we need to find out. But here in this case there is no cutting as we have uh, already found out in the previous table that there is no cutting. There is only banking in this question. Okay. So you can pause the video and uh, take a screenshot in order to make uh, the table. Okay. Now we will go for calculation of the next columns. So now we have the depths. Now we need to find out DM. We have D. We need to find out DM. So the average of these two will be will be coming here. Okay, 2 plus 1.2, that is 3.2. 3.2 divided by 2, that is 1.6. So 1.6 will be coming here. Okay. Just like that, the average of these two will be coming here. The average of these two will be coming here. The average of 0.5 and 0.78, these two will be coming here. Average of these two will be coming here. And so on. Okay. So in this way we are going to find out the value of dm that means mean depth. So what was the formula to find out the total quantity, total area according to midsectional method if you remember then it was nothing but bdm plus sdm square that was the area and the volume was bdm plus SDM squared multiplied by L. So that is exactly what we are doing here. First of all, we are finding out DM. Then we will multiply DM by means of B. And what is B? It is given in the question. And then we will calculate SDM square. Then we will calculate the total area, BDM plus SDM square. And then uh, we will find out the length. And then multiply BDM plus SDM square by L. Okay where we will get the total quantity. Now let us calculate all these values. Now we have found out all the values of dm, 
all the values of mean depth for each and every station just like that now we need to find out bdm what is b b is given is the formation width and it is given as i think 10 meters in the question so each and every dm has to be multiplied by 10 where we'll get the value of bdm so 1.6 multiplied by 10 it is going to be 16 11.8 8.3 6.5 11, 9, 7.9, 9, 9. Okay. So we have found out BDM. Now SDM square. We need to find out SDM square for each and every station. Now what is S? As given in the question, the side slope is side slope is 2 is to 1. Side slope is 2 is to 1. That means S value is 2. S is equal to 2. Okay. So S dm square. What is dm here? 1.6. So here it is going to be, what is the value of S? It is 2. And what is the value of dm for this station? 1.6. 2 into 1.6 square. Again, S value is 2. What is the value of dm? 1.18, 2 into 1.18 square. What is the value of s? 2. What is the value of dm? 0.83, 2 into 0.83 square. So in this way, we need to calculate all these values for s dm square. The first row will be blank because it is the initial leading. Okay. So now, just like that, we have calculated s dm square for each and every station. Okay. So BDM we have got, SDM we have got for each and every station. So next column is BDM plus SDM square. So this is very simple. This plus this is equal to this. This plus this is equal to this. This plus this is equal to this. So we have filled that up for each and every station up to this point. So we have now got BDM plus SDM square. Okay. Now what is the next column says? Length between section. Length between section, which is denoted by L. Now, what is the length between this station and this station? This is 300, this is 330. What is the difference? 30. This is 330, this is 360. What is the difference? 30. 360, 390. Difference? 30. Distance between this and this? 30. Between this and this? 30. So, 30 is the length between each and every station. So, we'll write 30 under every row. In every row, we'll write 30, 30, 30 because the length between the stations are constant it is 30 now it is very simple bdm plus sdm square we have already uh, we have already have that value bdm plus sdm square multiplied by l that means this into this is equal to this this into this is equal to this this into this is equal to this bdm plus sdm square that we already have multiplied by l multiplied by L. But where we will write this value? Under banking or cutting? We will write those values here under banking. Why? Because all the depth that we have got, there is no negative value. How we are getting these values? I have already described that in our uh, previous table, but still I am repeating it again. RL of formation minus RL of ground. 105 minus 107 minus 105, 2. 106.8 minus 105.6, 1.2. 106.6 minus 105.44, 1.2. 106.8 minus 105.44, each and In each and every case, we are getting positive values. Okay? So when we get positive values of D, then that means we have banking. Wherever there will be negative value, the correspondence value will be cutting. Okay, when we have positive value, the particular volume for that particular station will be in banking. When we'll have negative values of D, we'll have that particular volume in cutting. Okay, that thing you need to remember very well. Now, it is very simple, BDM plus SDM square into L. We have BDM plus SDM square. All we need to do, 
is to multiply this value with this one, 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 and so on, and fill it up here under banking. Okay? So now, multiply by this by this, this by this here. Okay? So we have found out the quantity of art filling, artwork in banking or art filling for each and every station. And just like that, we have found out the total quantity of art filling to be 3513.76 cubic meter. If this was cutting, then it would have been called artwork in excavation. Now it is banking, so this is artwork in filling. So the total artwork in filling is found out to be 3513.76 cubic meter. And we have found out this total quantity by mid-sectional area method. Okay. So after completing this table, we will go for the drawing of the longitudinal section and the cross section. Drawing the drawing of the cross section is very easy. The, the, this is the ground level. The, uh, this is the formation width. The side slope is denoted by 2 is to 1 and the height is denoted by D. This is the typical cross section. Okay. Now uh, you can easily draw this. Now we need to go for the longitudinal section. Now we know we have calculated the uh, RL, uh, RL of the formation line at each and every station. RL of the uh, of, gra of the ground at each and every station is given in the question. So we just need to put those values in the in this graph. Along this line, these are the stations: 300, 330, 360. So chain is 10, 11, 12, 3, 330, 360, 390, 420, it goes like this, up to 600. So in the x-axis, it is chain is, and in the y-axis, it is the RL. Now, we are using the data value as 100. So, what is the first value of, uh, um, what is the first RL value of uh, chain is 10? That means the very first point. The RL of the ground level of the very first point is 105. So we are taking this baseline as 100. So we have just gone 5 centimeters above to denote this value of 105. Just like that, the next value is 105.6 of the ground level. So it is 5.6 centimeter. Up to this baseline, we are taking is, uh, this baseline we are uh, taking as 100. So that time we are taking as 100. So we just need to go 5.6 centimeter to denote the value of 105.6. Uh, so just like that, we have put each and every value for the corresponding chainage points of the ground level. So this is our existing ground level. Now we have already calculated the RL of formation uh, formation line for each and every point. So we have put the values of the RL of the formation line for each and every point very easy. The first value of RL, RL of formation line is 107. Here it is 107. So we have uh, gone a height of 10, uh, 7 centimeters. Next is 106.8. So we have gone a height of 6.8 centimeters. Just like that we have put the values of uh, formation line for each and every station. And we have achieved the formation line like this. From here to here the fall is 150. 1 in 150. From here to here, the fall is 1 in 100. Okay? It is given in the question. So we have, uh, after putting all these values, we have joined all these points and to, uh, we have found out the formation line. And also we have joined these points to find out the existing ground line. So this is formation line, this is ground line. And the gap between the formation line and the ground has to be filled up by art. So in this way, we have drawn this longitudinal section as well as the cross section. So now we have solved this problem by mid-sectional area method. Now we also need to solve this problem by mean sectional area method. For that we will have to prepare this table. There is not too much of difference. You can see I will compare both the tables. Almost everything is same. Chain edge, length, RL of ground, RL of formation, depth. Up to this point is same. 
up to D, it is same. But here you find out the what mean depth. That is why it is called midsectional method. Here we have found out mean depth. But now after finding out D, in this case we we have gone for calculation BD, then calculation of SD square, then calculation of area, BD plus SD square. That means for each and every station, for each and every station we will have to calculate the area. BD plus SD square for each and every station and after that we will have to take mean sectional area here we have calculated mean depth just uh, look at the difference here we have calculated mean depth in the first method mid sectional method we have calculated what mean depth but now we will calculate mean area here so whatever the area here suppose it is X it is Y it is Z so this value will be empty so mid se mean, se mean sectional area will be x plus y by 2 here it will be y plus z by 2 so just like that and whatever the area we get we multiply that by l what is l here l is nothing but in each and every case l is 30 just like the previous case here l is 30 in each and every this in, in each and every case so here also in each and every case because the problem is the same, only the method is different. So here also in each and every case the uh, L is 30. So we have found out B, uh, area, mean area. We have uh, got L. So it is very easy for us to calculate BD plus SD square. That means mean area multiplied by whatever we get here. Mean area multiplied by length, we get the volume. Mean area multiplied by length, we get the volume. Just like that, we have to find out the volume for each and every station and then finally the total okay so we need to complete this table okay this was the given question draw the longitudinal section typical cross section prepare an estimate for artwork we have done all these things now find the area of side slopes and the cost of stone pitching on the side slopes this part we will do in the next video because this video has already become too lengthy so till now we have Calculated the total volume of artwork, we have drawn the longitudinal section as well as the cross section. Okay, so we will calculate the area of the side slopes and calculate the amount of stone pitchings on the side slopes in our next video.